Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the April 24th, the year 2000, Cape Elizabeth Planning Board meeting. First item on the agenda is discussion and approval of the previous meeting's minutes of March 21st, the year 2000. Any comments or changes from members of the board? Yes, Nancy? I move adoption. Thank you. <clears throat> Second. Second by Mr. Parkhurst. Any further discussion before we vote on this matter? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Minutes are approved. Correspondence this week, email from Mr. and Mrs. G. and S. Murray in regards to the police station site plan, a letter concerning public facilities construction schedule, sent by Mr. McGovern, Letter from N. Olson in regards to the Jordan Farm Stand. Letter from Mr. and Mrs. E. and J. Murray in regards to the Jordan Farm Stand. Letter from Mr. and Mrs. Kennedy in regards to the Jordan Farm Stand. Letter from CMP in regards to the Jordan Farm Stand. A letter from H. Strout in regards to a buried cable. Letter from H. Strout in regards to Nexel antenna site plan. Uh, we also had items on the agenda this evening in regards to the Murray Repair Garage site plan the Jordan farm stand. I believe that was it. Any comments from the board regarding correspondence received this week? Under old business, first item on the agenda is the Cape Elizabeth Police and Fire Station site plans. The town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting the site plan review of the proposed construction of a new police station and renovation of the public works garage into a fire station located at 325 Ocean House Road in Jordan Way. Section 19-9, Site Plan Public Hearing. I'd like to ask the applicant to come forward, introduce any new information provided, uh, at the end of which I will open the public hearing. Good evening, I'm Steve Harding, I'm the town engineer. I also work for Oast Associates. I have with me tonight uh, Joe Hennessy, the project architect. He's also from Oast Associates. Uh, we have Chief McGoldrick of the fire department with us this evening. We have Chief Pickering and Captain Williams of the Police Department. We have Gilly Jordan, the Chairman of the Facilities 2000 Committee, and my Governor, the Town Manager. All those people have been very instrumental in the development of the project so far to this point. Uh, we'd like to go through some of the changes that we have made since the last meeting uh, with you, you folks. Uh, we made a number of changes to the landscaping plan. Uh, if you'll notice in your packet on drawing L1, we've uh, made an effort to more strongly to differentiate between the existing plannings and the proposed plannings. Uh, we've also added preservation notes to drawing L2, which will instruct the contractor what they should do uh, to preserve the existing vegetation on the site. We've also added construction fencing and, uh, and some more notes on the existing conditions and demolition plan, which is, I believe, drawing C101 of your package, uh, again, to help uh, protect the existing plantings and to, to direct the contractor during some instruction. Um, we've removed the understory plantings along Jordan Way to create more of a boulevard effect as you're going down Jordan Way. We've also added some uh, more formal plantings to the entryway. This is a, a suggestion that was made at the last meeting. Um, we've also got a, in Maureen's memo, uh, the town planner's memo, she uh, notes that there are three Colorado spruce trees that have been added here uh, and questions whether or not we should keep those. Just an explanation of why we did that. We, we wanted to kind of filter the view as you were heading down 77 so you wouldn't see the, the long, longer part of the building and more break it up rather than completely block it. Uh, I guess we're not, we're not strongly married to that, that uh, concept. I'll defer to the board for uh, recommendations and, and suggestions. Um, we've also made some changes to the lighting plan. If you'll remember, we had a more globe-style fixture around the police station with shoebox-style shoebox style lighting in the remainder of the site. Uh, we've completely changed that to go to the colonial style fixtures. The uh, two fixtures in the front plaza way will uh, be the exact fixtures that you see right now in the town center sidewalk. Uh, those are about approximately 11 feet high. Uh, the remainder of the site will be the same style fixture, only it'll be about 15 feet high so we can get a little bit better lighting distribution. Uh, we've made some small changes to the to the plan itself. There was a masonry, uh, excuse me, a mortarless retaining wall, which was here. That caused some confusion at the last meeting. We've eliminated that wall by getting rid of one parking space here. 
So now instead of having a re retaining wall for a transition slope, we we'll just have a grass slope going from the sidewalk to the parking lot area. Um, we've also narrowed the access way and the emergency access to the school from the end of Jordan Way. Uh, we did that so we could put a mechanical gate arm here and we think that that will operate uh, much more efficiently than what's there now and still provide the uh, intended function of allowing emergency access to the school whenever that's necessary. Um, we've added information on the pavers to distinguish that those will be a red shaded paver. Um, we've also clarified the flagpole uh, si situation. There's an existing flagpole which is in the front of the public safety building. That'll be relocated over to the front of the fire station building and the new plaza way will have a new flagpole uh, installed in that. Uh, we made some minor changes to the building. We've shortened this northwest corner. Uh, this was a, a correction that we made and I'd just like to point out that this, this footprint now matches the floor plan that was earlier uh, submitted to you. We had a bay window back here by the exercise room. We've deleted that and it's become a flat uh, window along that wall. We also had some glass block that we had near the folding cell area. We've gotten rid of that and determined that we don't need to provide natural light there, so that's gonna, just going to be a solid wall in that area. Um, we've also made two minor uh, changes that aren't reflected on your plan. I would just like to go over those real quickly with you. We've converted, there were two handicap spaces here, and by code we only need one to cover the 25 spaces that are in the parking lot area. Actually, it'd be 24 spaces now with the deletion of this. But in order to, so that we don't lose the, the universal access of one space, we've gotten rid of one of the handicapped spaces. So one of the remaining handicapped spaces will still be van accessible, which will still need to come and, and still be the allowed number that we, we would need. We've also made the change. We, on your plan, you'll see that we were going to relocate the existing antenna on the public works building determined that we can't use that existing antenna and we're going to actually build a new antenna assembly. Uh, it won't be any higher than 25 feet above the highest building uh, elevation on the public works building, so it won't trigger the um, tower ordinance which was just recently enacted. Um, we'd also like to just touch upon some issues that have been, has been ongoing throughout the project. Uh, there was some noise issues associated with the generator that and determined that uh, using a rough calculation that conservatively sizes it somewhere between 150 and 200 uh, kilowatts of a diesel generator. Uh, we've gone to the, a local supplier and found a, a, a generator which will be a noise attenuation generator um, and gotten some noise level information from them. From that we were able to determine that in this distance of 180 feet to the property on the nearest residential property line, the uh, noise level drops significantly, so it's only around 40 decibels in this area here, which is equivalent to the noise that you might find in a typical living room. So it, it shouldn't be an impact uh, with the residential. And again, I emphasize that it is an emergency generator, only be used in emergency situations, and it probably would be exercised five to ten minutes a week just to make sure that it's running properly. Uh, but that would be done during the daytime hours. Um, also, there's been a significant discussion regarding the uh, elevation of the building, of the, the front view of the building. Uh, would like to go through that and kind of show you where, we, where we're at and what we're recommending. Uh, the back in here, back, you'll see a, an elevation label number one. That's our recommended treatment. And what we're proposing is a break on the wall portions of the building, the uh, granite uh, treatment intermingled in, in the treatment. Uh, walls. Uh, we're calling for a brown uh, wooden platform in the roof area. And the only change that we've, we've made for this pattern is we've stolen the uh, sunburst pattern. Excuse me, sunburst pattern. You can see in the uh, uh, elevation number five. We've taken that. And we'd like to use that treatment in the east elevation, which would be this elevation of the porch area that we've created in front of the building. And then on the south side, in just that, that segment there. And I'll hand out a perspective view to kind of hopefully give you a little bit better picture of it. <coughs> uh, some of the alternatives that we did look at 
included brick on all the all the uh, wall faces, including the gable end. Uh, the drawback with this alternative is primarily in its cost. Um, there's about 4,000 square feet of gable area throughout <coughs> the building. Uh, we're estimating it's 50 to 75 thousand dollars of additional work that would be required to to install this. Uh, the wall area would require some additional support as well as the installation of the brick, which would be significantly uh, more difficult to do than the wooden clapboard. Uh, that's a prob probably about a $40,000 line item. And then in the porch area up above, we don't have any wall support area underneath, so we'd have to create an independent support system within that porch area, the roof of that. And that's about a fifteen dollars to $20,000 item. It's a rough estimate. Room. But uh, kind of to give you a, an idea of what, what our the magnitude of the cost might be. Um, alternative, or uh, elevation number three is kind of a combination between the two. Um, we looked at, at putting brick in, in the uh, wall areas and then using the clapboard up in the front and saving that fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. Again, we still feel that we should should go with alternative one. Uh, we also tried a, uh, a drive it type finish. Uh, and nobody likes that. We've basically gotten rid of that. And alternative five was a, an attempt at using a relic, yellow brick pattern. Um, again, that wasn't very well received, and, and we've basically um, taken that taken that, and not uh, followed through with it. Uh, in closing, I would like to just go through and say that we've uh, worked closely with the building committee for over a year. Uh, we've obviously met a few times with this group. Uh, we've taken your recommendations and suggestions. Uh, we've deleted the chain link fence that was to provide security around the back part of the parking lot. We've gotten rid of that. We've created several gables in the front of the building, uh, again upon uh, a suggestion by the board. We've uh, changed the window patterns in the board for a more traditional style. We've gotten rid of the, uh, at one point we had a wraparound glass window here. We've gotten rid of those and created solid solid columns along the, the corners of the building. Uh, we've created the exterior columns and the porch entrance area to kind of enhance, enhance that area. We've also added the, uh, a plaza area, which is a significant entryway. And uh, we've also enhanced the uh, landscape and plans, plans of the overall site. Uh, with that, we think we've, we've got the uh, intent and the ordinance requirements for the town center. Uh, we hope you agree. Certainly, be uh, here to answer any questions or comments that you or the public may have. Thank you. At this time, the board will open the public hearing. The public hearing is now open on the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth for a police and fire station site plan, be located in the vicinity of 325 Ocean House Road. Any members present this evening who would like to speak in this manner, please approach the podium and identify yourself by name and residence, please. There's no one interested in speaking. Public hearing is now closed. The matter is open for discussion by board members. <coughs> yes, please, Karen. Mr. Harding, you uh, did a good job of explaining what the emergency generator would mean to the abutters in terms of decibel levels at their property line. Um, there's been some concern about the location of the external mechanical equipment on the police station. Um, I know you're going to put it on the west side of the building and elevate it. Could you um, use the same decibel level comparison to the property line for that equipment? I can't give you the decibel level of, uh, of that equipment because we haven't sized it yet. Um, it's going to depend a lot on a lot of different factors used through the design. Um, I can tell you that our intent <coughs> is to, to elevate it up in this, this area and try to use as many noise attenuation uh, design issues as we can. Uh, if, if it can't be done that way, we could set it on the south side of the building and use the building as, its, as a block, if you will, to help protect the residence, which is actually up to the closest residence is right here. And then there's another residence further back uh, on that side. Okay. <clears throat> Further questions from the board? 
Steve. <coughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, just by to preface my comments and, and a couple of questions I have. Um, I was the one who suggested that we have a public hearing and put the thing in the Cape Courier and was really hoping someone, the townspeople, would show up and actually have some comments or something. Obviously, uh, they're indifferent or they like the plan, so, so be it. Um, on a slightly different note, I've had, I think it was 14 phone calls, either to my voicemail or at my office or <clears throat> at my home that have been anonymous and have supported um, apparently being singled out as the one being somewhat vocally opposed, opposed to the design of this building, but they didn't, weren't willing to come forward tonight and say something on their own, so I guess we'll leave that alone. A um, <clears throat> couple of questions. Under uh, pedestrian circulation, um, this is a sentence here that says the sidewalk on the southern side of the building is six feet wide, which should still provide a pedestrian walkway of sufficient width if cars park. A portion of the car overhangs onto the sidewalk. Why would a car, why would a portion of a car overhang onto the sidewalk under any circumstances? The curb, uh, I think the area you're talking about is right through here. I believe so, uh, yeah. The curb section here will have a six or seven inch wheel. Many vehicles, trucks, vans that just driving up won't hit that reveal. You'll be able to clear that with the nose of your car. So this is a potential for an 18 or 20, okay. 24 inch overhang. <laughs> and by, I think we could actually go uh, a narrower width, but with a six foot, that still allows, uh, if somebody does pull up that far, that still allows for pedestrians to walk along and still okay. be in the walkway. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> in the fire station, um, it says the ex existing floor drain in the new fire station will remain connected to the public sewer. Um, is that something that's allowed by code? Yeah, you can, what we'll end up doing is, and that's basically what happens now, the floor drains come out of the building, they go through an oil water separator, and then they're discharged into the sewer, which goes along this side of the, uh, the site. Unfortunately, that oil water separator is right, located right in the building footprint of where our addition is going to go. So we're going to have to relocate that out and extend the lines to pretty much go through the, the oil water separator as it does today. So I understand that that meets the code requirements. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, back again to the fire station. It says the front addition windows will have an opaque panel on the lower one-third of the building and regular glass on the top two-thirds. What is the reason for the opaque panel on the bottom third? Correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, but I believe that's to match the existing treatment that's going around the building. The opaque panels, um, I think there is a lower glass that, that may actually be see-through, but in this area we'll have a, a uh, sitting area right behind that, so if it was clear, you could just see people's legs and people sitting there. Or if we go to the opaque panels, that, that blocks off that portion, and we're talk, talking very high elevation. <coughs> something in this range. Is that roughly correct? That's that correct. The bottom of uh, the uh, hexagonal shape of the perimeter of the building is what has the service counter where all the E9 radios are located. That's where the service plan and the uh, Dispatcher is going to sit. So we're trying to salvage some of the windows from the existing building. And we're taking that glass that's low to the ground out, put an opening down there so we can use the same window. If you're not looking in underneath the cabinet, that's all the right spider. For the remainder of the evening, those members of the design and engineering staff, if you do speak, if you could come to the podium, otherwise it's not recorded and it's not part of the public meeting. Thank you. Um, that, that's all the questions I have, I guess, just in closing, and I'll be quiet after this. Um, this little sunburst design that has been presented to us, presented to us tonight, um, I guess I can't find words to describe my reaction to it. Um, it's just plain not attractive. Um, if it's going to cost fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars to run brick up the gables, 
so be it. Um, this is a, again, I'll repeat myself from last meeting. This is a public building owned by the citizens of Cape Elizabeth for the use of town employees uh, to enforce the laws of the town. Um, <clears throat> it's also the first new building to be built in the town center zone. And frankly, I think this is a very poor precedent to set um, for future development in the town center zone. I mean, how can the town center zoning have any teeth or how can the planning board operate if someone wants to come in and build a smaller version of something that looks just like this somewhere else in the town center? We have put our blessing on this. <clears throat> we couldn't prevent something like this else from being built um, by someone else. And I just think it's a really, uh, a really poor thing to do. So with that, I will uh, pass along to other people on the board. Thank you, Steve. Other comments? David. Steve, I have a couple of questions. Um, Well, just a curiosity, uh, when is this subject to be uh, prepared for bid? Um, we're looking at a September to October time frame, I think. Probably give you a more specific range, but an early fall. So you, so basically your exterior plans are completed, but your bids, bid plans aren't completed at this point, so? what We would be a little bit further along with the design, but we wanted to make sure what we were going to design was what was going to actually be approved by the planning board. Um, it's kind of a little bit different than a typical project that we've been moving along. We know there were some specific concerns that the board had. We wanted to make sure that we designed it once and not went through a significant... So that, that explains why some of the mechanicals aren't finished. That's why some of the final design issues haven't been addressed. I, I, I had some questions on the exterior lighting. If you might just review where the taller um, uh, fixtures are going to be rather than the, the ones that are going to uh, match the center of town fixtures. Yeah, the uh, sight lighting is shown on your packet in drawing L1. Yep. Um, the two 11-foot tower, um, the 11-foot light poles will be here. Um, we have a pole here, 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 and along the extension to Jordan Way, and then along this this area back here to light this area. We have a pole here, here. In the back side of the parking lot, the corner here, and then one each on the, uh, the islands. And, and the height of those again? Were? 15 feet, okay. approximately. And they, do they have a cutoff on them? No, they're, they're, they're basically the same light that you see on the town center. Okay. Just a taller pole. Do you know that there are other temporary That's correct. Um, the temporary dispatch area, that project is actually out to bid. Um, what we're trying to do is, is get that area prepared for the E911 equipment that will be coming in uh, sometime between August and, and October, um, depending on how quickly they can move up the state. That's why we've kind of expedited this portion of the building. We did do a final design. That's actually out to bid. <coughs> bid opening is scheduled for May 4th. We're hoping to get a, a construction uh, finished about July 15th and allow the, you know, uh, the dispatch that's currently located in the public safety to move over to this area and occupy that space and then when the E911 people come through and put their equipment in, the uh, Cape Elizabeth will be in compliance with that program and, and the rest of the region. So actually the, the whole project isn't bid as one project? It's, okay. No, we had to separate that portion out. Just, and it's just the 272 square foot addition that you see on the front. Um, <clears throat> I just had one quick question of a clarification. When we look at number one elevation, just as an example, um, in between the center peak and the left peak, is that a roof line going across there so that it helps the drainage of the roof. Is that what that is? In between the, the this, two, the left this roof line does not go all the way back. 
the building. Okay. The center roof line goes all the way back to the rear of the building. This roof line, and I don't have a floor plan, but I'm, I'm going to say it's right in this area. Yep. So what you see is the connection of those two. Right. It'll, it'll to get the pitch to that's right. the water run off. Okay. Um, I, I guess I have to concur a little bit with uh, Steve. I have a hard time, Steve Parker, because I have a hard time visualizing this as, as a structure that complies with the town center intent. And I still am wrestling with, with meeting that intent. Um, I'm not an architect, and it's hard for me to uh, tell you what I'd like to see, but I, it just doesn't fit with what I think the town center people of this should be. And I'm, I'm wrestling with this, and I don't know quite how to handle it. And I'm just wondering if there's a way. Uh, I just wanted to open up my, and ask Maureen if, um, if there is a way that we might get some assistance on the planning board uh, as far as the uh, professional assistance. Uh, is there a way that we can do this? Or? The planning board can require the applicant to set up a review escrow account, um, which you can use to hire an expert to do reviews. Um, typically, you use that money for a town engineer. However, there have been times in the past when um, you've, you've hired an expert, say, to review water quality testing. Um, so I, I don't see any reason why you couldn't use it for other expertise, such as an architect. As a member of the board, I would like to go on record that, that um, it, it's beyond my capability to determine whether this actually architecturally fits what the intent of the town center would be. But as a board member, I would certainly like some assistance in that area if it was possible. Are there any specific concerns that you could have that we could discuss and possibly talk through and help you? Uh, well, feel a little more comfortable with what we have designed? I think what's important to me is the town center is an identification as to our town. And when you come into town now, one of the first things we'll see is this building. And to me, it, I'm not capable of determining what would really fit best. But I've been in a lot of town centers, and some of them are easy to look at, and others aren't. Um, and I. I would certainly like some help in taking a look at your proposal, which I think, number one, is the one that you're most interested in seeing constructed, and giving us some thoughts as to uh, uh, how, in actuality, it's going to look when it's finished. And, uh, and that's what I'm wrestling with right now. It's, it's trying to figure out how that fits and not being an architect or an artist to tell for me to say it just from what I see and from what I hear, um, others uh, stayed on the board that they're having trouble um, with this layout and how it will fit in the town center. I guess that's a difficult comment for us to respond to because we think that we've come up with a design that meets the intent of the town center board. <coughs> if you can point to some specific areas that we could discuss and maybe there's something about the plan that makes the board feel uncomfortable. We can certainly work with the board. I think we've, we've tried to do that so far. Um, we believe that we're, we're there. Um, if you folks aren't, aren't there with us, then let's talk about it and see if there's some way that we can resolve this. Well, that's, that's a hard time thing that I think we, that I do and have in particular, and I sense that Steve uh, Parkhurst has the same feeling, that it just <coughs> doesn't seem to fit what we think uh, was the intent of the 
Town Center plan. And uh, I'm struggling with it. I can't seem to figure out exactly what I'd really like to see, but I, um, but there isn't enough here for me to get a good feel as to what it's going to be. Further comments from the board, John? Uh, well, I'd like to address that issue too, but first a couple of specific questions. Can you tell me the thinking behind the where the sunburst design came in on the two? I guess we just wanted to try to break up this, and, you know, make this more the entryway. I, I think I'm hearing from the board that they're not exactly in love with it. Um, if there's, there are variations to this, we could take the, the semicircle out and just carry these uh, designs down, which is done over at the middle school. If if the board just totally is uncomfortable with that kind of design, you know, this was the original intent over here. If you want to go back to that, if that if that would make the board feel more comfortable, I certainly think we could we could make that change. Yeah, um, I personally, I, I'm not <clears throat> wild about the sunburst design on the on the side, but I was just wondering where that, what the basis for that was. Uh, secondly, the small retaining walls in the, in the entryway, what's the material on that? Uh, this is a, a brick. Um, just a second. On drawing L2, uh, you'll see the detail on the left-hand side. It's a granite block material with a, a granite, flat granite uh, piece on top, is along it, the top. Does it match the foundation? Yes, I believe so. Yes. Of the of the building? Yes, it would. I mean, similar to the the water table that you see along the bottom yeah. of the building. Okay. The other issue that I'm concerned about is the the uh, HVAC system and the noise issue. Um, to me, that's much more of an issue than the emergency generator only because of the times of use. And it sounds like we still can't be assured that the noise level will or will not be acceptable to abutters. Um, how can we uh, how can we be certain on that that if placed on the roof where you want to place it it's not going to be a uh, a problem to the only way I can think of assuring you of that is I think if we if we put it on the south side down on the ground which I believe we could do that would certainly take away from that the only drawback is you'll be able to see it as you drive up but maybe that's not as as big a concern as the noise would be. I, I think we could do it on the west side. I think we'd have to go through a, a final design of the, of the HVAC system to assure you of that, so we could pick out something and show you that. Um, if the board would like, that would make it easier to accept. We could certainly try to put it here, and if we have a problem with that, we could come back. But I, I think we could basically say that we'll put it on the south elevation of the building. That's, I guess, one way to ensure it. Well, and on the general issue of the design of the building and the, and the town center standards, uh, we've been through workshops and we've looked at various designs and there have been some changes to this design. I think we're all stuck with some basics that, that can't be avoided. Number one, this building is a, a large building that the town is allowed to exceed the standards in the town center in terms of size. And uh, that's part of the design problem. Uh, I don't think there's much that can be done about that. I think that's part of the reservation of people on the board about, well, it doesn't look like it fits in the town center. Well, 
I think that's because of where where it is, and, and where it is is where it has to be built. So I, I don't know if there's much we can do about about that issue. It's a large building, and because of that, the design is going to be different than a much smaller building that you can do different things with uh, for the town center. Uh, secondly, I guess I'd have to say that obviously the town center standards are are not specific for a reason. Uh, but it's, it's one thing for us to say that it doesn't fit the town center standards. It's another thing for us to say what we think would fit the town center standards. And I'm not sure we've been very specific with the town in terms of how we would want the design change to fit the town center standards. And frankly, I think it's because given the fact this is one of the first projects, nobody really knows what, how it should look, especially with a building this size. So, uh, I think the changes it, that have been made have been positive based on what was originally proposed. And uh, you know, as a board, if we want something specific to fit the town center standards, I think we have to be more specific about telling them what that is. I, I think that it, it uh, serves the function that, that it's supposed to serve and, and is um, a functional building and not totally unattractive given the, the limitations and you know we, we'd have to give the town a little more guidance if we're saying it doesn't fit the standard rather than just say you know it, it looks too big or we don't like the look of it so uh, I think given the limitations and the uncertainty of what the standard is uh, I think that the town's tried to take our comments such as they are and, and address them. Go ahead, Nancy. Um, I agree on the sunburst. Um, there's something uh, that's not appropriate. Um, but um, I agree with my seatmate's uh, comments. Uh, I don't think that we can be specific um, I I think that the building has improved considerably. Um, <clears throat> I'm not in love with it, but it's been through the process. It's uh, I understand it's built from the inside out. Uh, the police station, anyway. And uh, there were certainly technical requirements that I'm not apt to judge. So I think that you've been responsive, and I appreciate that. It's not a beautiful building. Mr. Wilcox, you're the only one remaining. Well, I, I, I guess I'd like to uh, ask a couple questions and, and also uh, <clears throat> offer a couple a couple comments uh, with with regard to the to the fit in the town center. I think a lot of the uh, confusion is, is stemming from the fact uh, that the compatibility requirements and the, the text part of the town center ordinance is drafted. Uh, with the uh, image or goal uh, <clears throat> of the scale of massing of a 5,000 square foot footprint in mind. Uh, the section that allows uh, 10,000 square foot footprints for municipal properties uh, I don't think was ever envisioned as, as happening right on Main Street of the village, if you will, uh, but lo and behold, here it is. And I think that the, the efforts that you've made have, have obviously revolved around trying to bridge that gap and, and try, to, try to do it. Uh, <clears throat> and while I can uh, imagine a 10,000 square foot building that might look like 
5,000 square foot buildings around a courtyard, but all linked up or something like that. It, it obviously comes at some, uh, some expense to the convenience of the people who are using the building on the inside, and it appears that uh, through the course of your work, you either have not explored that or feel that that would be detrimental to the functioning of the facility, and so it's just not in the cards. Uh, those things uh, being said, I think that the, uh, uh, the attempts to uh, develop the sort of uh, uh, impression of pavilions uh, that break out of the 10,000 square foot mass, I think, is, uh, is, uh, is a good effort. Uh, the, the mixture of uh, pitched roofs and flat roofs always leaves you a little bit wondering why it wasn't one or the other in the first place, but uh, I think it's a uh, noticeable improvement from the, the earlier scheme, and, uh, and I think as such, then, it, uh, it, meets the, uh, it meets the letter of our ordinance, uh, if not maybe what people's image of town center is, but that's uh, uh, another issue, I guess. Uh, I think the sunbursts detract from the uh, from the entrance and the glass and the seal on the wall or, or, or whatever develops in that area. So I I would also uh, prefer seeing something plainer up there. And I didn't think your your last. I like the first scheme and the last scheme. I didn't think the last one was as bad as it, as, as the rap that it seems to be getting, but. Uh, <coughs> I had a couple questions about uh, about the lighting. Uh, is it possible to do cutoff lighting? Your first scheme was cut off, had cutoff lighting. It's it's certainly possible to do that. Um, I think what we got from the board from the last meeting was that you wanted to see the town center colonial lighting scheme throughout the project. I think mm -hmm. that's what we went to. Um, are there are there lighting fixtures which have that sort of colonial appearance but have uh, cut off? Optics I'm not inside. aware of any, but that doesn't mean that there aren't any. <coughs> or, or lower lower brightness than what we've got now. Well, the the brightness, and hopefully you'll see an improvement on the the town center lightning. Uh, mm -hmm. Recently, the public works uh, department has changed the bulbs in the existing one. I think the complaint has been the intensity of the glare as yeah. you look at the fixture, and not yeah. so much the lighting pattern. Mm -hmm. What we've done is put a frosted bulb in that, where it's got a coated covering, which we're hoping is going to soften that intensity, but still give us the same light distribution. Um, so that's that's what we've done on that end. Um, I I don't know about how other board members feel, but I'm I'm not that married to parking lot luminaires needing to look colonial when they're not even anywhere near the street lights. And whenever you have uh, by keeping the wattage down, you obviously then have more poles and more fixtures, and so uh, you know, the more you can do to keep the to keep the glare down in in that type of a situation, I I think that's I what think we're that that the first good, time around was to have that more would of be a, a traditional shoebox, but a, a more modern-looking shoebox where yeah. you would have uh, shine down. Yeah, I I can see where on Jordan Way and right right up front that maybe the having some design consistency. Uh, is a good idea, but just for something in the back of the parking lot, I'm not sure. That Are you suggesting that this quarter through here should be the colonial style? Or yeah, especially if you could part? find a, a cut-off version. Uh, and there are a lot of ones that have sort of more of a Victorian gaslight sort of look, and then inside there's a series of cones that are parabolic cones that make all the light go down. I don't know if there's such a thing in the style that we've got sure. out there on on Main on Main Street, but there's there's several varieties, I suppose. Mm -hmm. we, could, we could investigate that. That's something yeah. we could work with the yeah. town planner. I think that would be worth doing um, with the town now, planner. Just so I'm clear, you'd still be looking for a shoebox style lighting back here, back there, and, and even up in back there. Yeah. The station. Yeah. Is that consistent with everybody's thoughts on the board? Especially when you see more than one of them at once, or a whole row of them at once, to have that light just going down 
makes a big difference in terms of the overall impression. There's but a these uh, these lights could still be the I think I think same. those yeah. Mm -hmm. And, okay. and this quarter here you're suggesting yeah. throw it out the colonial stuff. So we'd actually have yeah. to yeah, make them all match, you know. And I would uh, I would I would think that it would be kind of unfortunate to have a whole bunch of mechanical equipment sprout on the sidewalk on the south side of the building. But if you've got uh, some idea of the overall load on the units and some idea of what then the overall uh, power consumption and size of, of them we may be away is, from that. Uh, yeah. That you'd probably be okay with them somehow or other, or even on the roof on the south side, on the flat roof on the south side of the building, as opposed to down on the sidewalk. We could do that. Who needs that we stuff? Could do that. We could do that. Right? They'd still be screened. Would that depend ease yeah. the concerns of the noise if we said we were going to put it on the flat side of the, the south side of the building? Yeah, especially if you could take a look at it uh, in terms of what the sight lines are to them. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't see them from the front or approaching from the from the north, approaching from the south. Maybe they'd be more exposed to view, but they can be they can be handled well also. I think they don't have to profile. don't have to be like the one on top of the swimming pool now, right above the front door. <clears throat> Those were my impressions, at any rate, of, uh, of the progress. Thank you, Mark. Is there anything further from board members that have already spoken? David? Hey, um, Erie, I'd like to talk a little bit about, Steve, is the type of window frames on, on the, facing the, the street. Um, I notice you've got some double hung as well as what looks to be like casement windows. Uh, are the frames going to be all the same or are they? I need to refer to the project architect for okay. case points. <clears throat> yes, the intent is to have them all the same type of frame. And it's either going to be an aluminum or a, a vinyl trim frame, so it's slow maintenance. Um, they're not casement windows. The windows that have no uh, horizontal mullion are going to be fixed windows. So they're either double hung windows in the office areas or the large ones in the front of the building will be just fixed windows. <coughs> okay, so the, so the large vertical windows are going to be fixed in place and, yes. and the frame assemblies will be similar to the casement, uh, the double hung windows? Yes. I guess not to get involved in this but one of the things that I see when I look at um, when I look at the porch if you want to call it that with the pillars on it is that I see some of the windows behind the pillars and the uh, granite tablet uh, I, I would tend to think that that should be centered in between the pillars um, to make it look a little uh, as, as though it wasn't an afterthought Actually, if, uh, what, what we tried to do was once we established the scale of that front gable was to evenly space the columns across there. Yeah. The tablature um, probably could be something that could be uh, reduced or eliminated. It started out as a place to put the, the town seal and the police seal on there. Um, and the scale of it was undetermined at the time we started these elevations. So. Um, I think it would be difficult without modifying some of the interior plan um, to change too much of that that tablature to get it even in the, into the center of the center bag. Um, the, the right hand edge of those um, of the area that you're talking about right in here is a small break in the wall and this is the front lobby. So by moving this over we'd be cutting out the glass into the front lobby of the building. 
I, I appreciate the effort that you went through to try to make this compatible and, and more pleasing. But that was one of the areas that, that I looked at. That I like the I like the idea of the patio there in the porch, but I would think it would look a little better if there was some way that you could center the windows and and make it look a, a little <coughs> more symmetrical. But that. That's my opinion, but I just thought I'd raise that as a thought. Steve? <clears throat> um, the, if you could clarify this, the, <clears throat> the walls that are outside the front that in, sort of enclose the um, patio area or whatever you want to call it where the flagpole is, is it my understanding that that's all granite? Top is intended to be a, uh, a surface at an elevation that you can sit on. Then underneath that is a field stone, a stone similar to what's along the town center walkway, where we have stone walls that are along there, but just a different scale. It, it strikes me that field stone mixed with um, granite, I think, you know, may be an okay combination if the uh, stone is correct. But then to add the um, the brick, the clapboards, and everything, it, it, it sounds like it's just going to have too many materials there. Um, would it be a chance of um, topping the fieldstone walls with maybe flat fieldstones so it wouldn't look like it was so, I guess, I don't know, mixed up? Uh, yeah. Plan in front of you. So I really don't think that anyone is going to want to go out there and sit. Um, <clears throat> maybe some employees from the police department will go out and have lunch there or something like that, but I don't think it's going to be a gathering spot for the town. The, the walls are intended to be a square stone granite, and then there will be a flat granite coping stone. So are, are you, what was your, I'm sorry, I didn't get your suggestion. It just, it just sounds like there's, again, you know, like we sort of started out with, just too many materials going on in the same site. It doesn't seem to be a consistency of, um, of design. And, <clears throat> you know, if the um, field stone is softened with planting so you don't really see it and you just see the granite, then I'm sure it'll be fine. But <clears throat> Again, it just, it just seems like there's too much going on in one site, too many different materials. They're going to be at odds with each other. Can I just take a second? size blocks intermingled with the mortar. And then there's a flat granite area on top of it. And that will be the same granite that you'll see against the, the building. The top of the, the granite will match the granite on the building. Am I correct in assuming that you want to change that material? Or no, I'm <coughs> just making an observation. I think that the time for making changes um, is probably past. Um, is there a suggestion <coughs> A change of material or a change. Excuse me? Is there a suggestion of material or a change of material? Or I guess. Whole, 
you know, you, if you look at this building, you've got, <clears throat> I assume, a, an asphalt shingle roof. We've got clapboards. We've got brick. We've got granite. And we've got granite tablature stone with a seal. We've got um, field stone. We've got more granite. It's just going to be so busy that it, it, it doesn't have, um, it's not going to be easy on the eye. It's going to be very confusing. And, <clears throat> you know, it, it seems that the, um, you know, the, the design is what the design is going to be. I'm just making offering comments and, you know, hoping in hopes that we could have something that, Again, I think the townspeople would be proud of once they see it built, instead of saying, is that really the building that was in the Cape Verde? With that, I'm, I'm finished on this one. Thank you, Steve. Further comments from the board? <clears throat> I just have a quick overview uh, before I call for the possibility of a motion. Typical of the difficulties we have as members of the planning boards when we get into design features. Uh, none of us have, well, one of us has a specific background in it, but most of us don't. Uh, the difficulty here is, is trying to find a way to fit a 9,000 square foot footprint building into what the town center zone was visualized as a village concept. I believe that's a near impossible task. Uh, and if you'll allow me, I'll be a minority of one. I happen to like the sunburst design, but we'll let that go. Uh, I believe a reasonable compromise has been met and that the applicant has listened to the concerns of the board. Not all of them have been uh, complied with 100%, but I believe a reasonable amount has. And uh, it's a difficult process. But the one thing we have to remember is it has to be a functioning police station when we're done. And uh, it may not totally comply with what our vision is for the village atmosphere of the town center when that's taken into consideration. I personally feel that some of the cost considerations in the exterior design probably could have been raised by changing some of the interior designs, but I don't think that's a planning board function. It's just a personal view. Uh, having said that, those are my concerns. If the board is ready to do so, I'll call for a motion if one would like to be proposed. Nancy? Um, motion for the board to consider findings of that. The town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting site plan review of the construction of a new police station and conversion of the existing public works building to a new fire station, all located in the vicinity of 325 Ocean House Road and Jordan Way, which requires review under Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations and Section 19-6-4D3 Town Center Design Requirements. Two, the plan substantially complies with the above regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for site plan review of the construction of a new police station and conversion of the existing public works building to a new fire station, all located in the vicinity of 325 Ocean House Road and Jordan Way, be approved. A motion has been made. You want to hear a second? Second. Second. Further discussion by board members before we vote. John. More question for um, Maureen. Uh, the issue of, again, going back to the HVAC equipment and, and the noise, um, at this point, we don't know 
how noisy that may or may not be. Is there some further, uh, and maybe it's outside of our jurisdiction or approval, but is there some procedure whereby that can be reviewed and approved, or is there a conditional approval we can suggest that where that can still be uh, looked at? I'm glad you asked that question because I want to make sure that um, all board members understand exactly what you're approving tonight because there's been a lot of discussion about changes and it's very important for staff to understand exactly what your intent is of what you're approving. This motion right here does nothing with, with the HVAC. Basically, you're, you're, you're leaving the issue up to the applicant to design something and, and you're not going to hear about it again. If you need to hear about it again, there's a couple of ways you can handle it. One is uh, you could put a conditional approval on this that, is, that sets a standard that the applicant has to meet, and if they can't meet it, then they come back to you. Or you could put a condition on the approval that just says they have to come back. For example, the applicant has said that the emergency generator is going to function at, a, at, at, a hundred, at 40 decibels at the property line. You could say that this equipment also has to function at no louder than 40 decibels at the property line, or the applicant has to come back. The applicant may say, well, gee, can, can you give us 60 decibels, or we have to come back. That, that would be a way, at least, to give the applicant something to strive for. It doesn't mean that they're pinned down, because they can always come back to you and say, you know, we did the best we could, and this is what it, it's working out to be. Um, the other option is just to, to make a condition that they have to submit that information. Uh, further, right now, my understanding is the plan shows that the HVAC is on the back of the building in a loft area. So if the applicant wants to move it anyplace else, that's a change to the plan which would require it to come back to the planning board. Um, but I, I just want to make sure that my understanding is the plans that the applicant has submitted are what you have made a motion to approve, and that includes the preferred design that the applicant has identified with the sunburst pattern. Are there any questions? John, would you like to propose a condition? Um, I would like to propose a condition that has more to do with the, the decibel level than the placement of the equipment. And I guess if uh, I realize the different types of equipment, but if the 40 decibel level can be complied with at the property line, uh, I think that would be satisfactory. What I wanted to avoid was tying them into having to put the HVAC equipment where it was in the design, which then makes it more noise than putting it elsewhere. And they would not have the ability to change that because that's what we approved. So. The condition I would propose would, would affect the decibel level, and they can put it wherever uh, it, would, it would meet that. Well, it, that's, that's my primary concern, yeah. is the decibel level at the property line. And but I would suggest 40 decibels, although I certainly... If, if that's your goal, you could also put a condition on here that the applicant can put the HVAC wherever they want to on the property where they can minimize decibel levels to the abutter. I mean, that, what that does, though, you understand every time you, you do that, then you may not know what it's going to look like in the end. But you can, you can approach it from that direction as well. Well, I don't know if we need to be that general. It seems there are only a few places they were considering. It is on the roof, uh, on the south side next to the parking lot, and then where was the third place? Up on the third place was down below the ground, but I think I heard from Mr. Wilcox that he would prefer to see it on the roof. It might be minimized. Right. The impact. The only other thing I'd like to add to that is the, the 40 decibel is equivalent to what you might hear in a normal living room. 65 decibels is considered uh, the nuisance level in many instances. That's, equi that's equivalent to what you might expect here in a normal business office. I think we could try to shoot for the 40 decibels, but we would like to have that, that leeway if we could. And I will remind you that the nearest residence is right in this house, and that's 
approximately, I'm going to say, 100 feet at least from the from the nearest corner of the building. There's another residence, but that's that's got to be 150 feet away. Though I don't know the exact distance. So if we could achieve that at the property line, you'd have significant protection for those structures that are located further away. May I suggest to you, John, that you propose a condition that a decibel level of between 40 and 60 be met at the property line? I'll accept that. 40 to 65? Uh, yep. That's all right with me. Karen, any objection to the condition? No. Nope. David, you had a question? I uh, had a question relative to the lighting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Steve brought this up, I mean, uh, Mark brought this up. Um, I, the, the lighting layout on the taller fixtures do not have a cutoff. And I'd like to uh, perhaps introduce um, some wording in the approval that the cutoff would be that, if not, uh, that there would be cutoff on those fixtures to make, make note that there is to be that. On the final plans. <clears throat> would you like to propose that as a condition? I would make it as a condition. Would you like to word it for us? Because you got me partially confused. Okay. I guess what I would do is I would I would suggest that there be a wording uh, in the approval that there be cutoffs on the parking lot lighting fixtures. <clears throat> Just so that I'm clear, that includes Jordan White. Pardon me? Just so that I'm clear, that includes Jordan White. Yes. But the, the fixtures in the front plaza area would be the same as what the town yes. is. Thank you. Nancy, do you have any objections to David's condition? No. I'll accept that. Karen? No. Okay. Mark? Uh, I have a question about uh, whether or not uh, a condition uh, should be worded with uh, decibel levels when we have uh, we have decibel levels spelled out in the ordinance in terms of where 45 is okay and where 60 is okay. For instance, 60 is okay during the day at one property line and 45 is okay at night on another property line. And in the ordinance, it's broken down between whether or not the abutter is residential or a residence located in a commercial industrial district, whatever that might be. Uh, and there's already uh, in Article 9 of uh, you know, what's certainly a uh, uh, an outline, if you will, of, of the types of sound levels that are acceptable. Well, yeah, I guess I'd no, go back no, to my like earlier question, which is if there was some other standard that was in place, mm -hmm. then uh, I, did, I didn't think we would need to address it. I wasn't sure there was. Uh, Maureen is looking it up now. We'll wait just a moment. Yeah, it's under 19.9-5, item O. And in terms of standards, there are lots of different standards on what, what noise is. So since we do have something in front of us that is better than... Yeah, the, the difference with this would be, excuse me, yeah. um, this is supposed to be measured four feet above the ground, whereas you were talking about a sound level at the property line. So I, I still think, and, and since you're using some of the same numbers, the, what your standard says for a commercial area, and I hope we would all agree that we're talking about the commercial area standard, is that from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., um, you would have a decibel level not to exceed 65, which is the number that the applicant has requested. From, from, 7 p from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., decibel level would be 55. So the expectation is that wherever the applicant places the HVAC, that it would still be it would be 55 decibels or less or less at the property line. That's a good way to state it. Also, <coughs> so it's not, it's not just a general range, 40 to 65. But 
Yeah, it, to me, minimums, you, it's funny. You don't want to put a minimum on, on you know, you're going to end up putting the applicant in the position of they have to pick equipment that's a little louder because they go down to 35 decibels. So you, you may just want to put a condition on there that it, it sounds like, I think your goal was to allow them to move it to achieve the least amount of noise. So really what you want is a condition that says that the applicant placed the HVAC equipment either in, in the rear loft area or in the side of the flat, uh, on top of the flat roof to achieve the least amount of decibel level at the property line for abutters. Is that what you wanted? With, with the understanding that through this ordinance, and that they the decibel, could not exceed. And that the decibel 55? level not exceed 65 or 55. 65 during the day, 55 <clears> at night. Yeah, I, the day and night difference really isn't applicable to HVAC equipment, I wouldn't think. But Well, I think in this building it would just because um, it's a 24-hour building. Well, that, that's what I mean. Yeah. So it's going to be the same decibel level whether it's during the day or night. Mm. So, even, well... Yeah, even during the day, you're saying that it would be 50. It would have to go no higher than 55 because the nighttime it would have to be 55. I guess what I'm saying is, by in all practical purposes, it's going to be what it's going to be. So it shouldn't, it can't exceed 55 because it's going to be the same decibel level in the day or at night. Any further questions on the motion proposed? Yes, David. I just have one point of clarification. I'd like to clear up. David, is this your proposal? The number one is what you propose, or? Our proposal before we started discussing tonight was uh, basically number one with the sunburst patent. After listening to the conversation tonight, that sounded like the sunburst patent is a desired alternative, so board wishes will go to sketch one. Well, my, my point one. is this. Then our vote tonight would be number one, right? Is that okay? <clears throat> the board is in agreement, Nancy. I would like to eliminate the uh, sunburst pad. It's no problem. No. Take it out. But I guess the question is that if we're voting on the proposal, do we need to? put as a condition to eliminate the sunburst pattern, is it already done since the proposal is, is one? You're saying that the proposal is now sketch one. I think as a matter of clarification, <laughs> if you could just add a condition that the sunburst okay. pattern is gone, yeah. that there won't be any questions. I so okay. move. Okay, Nancy has moved that the sunburst pattern be deleted. Agreed. Is there a second to that condition, please? Thank you, Karen. So we have a motion, a second, and now three conditions. Further questions or comments? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. And those opposed? Two opposed, thank you. Thank you to the applicant for your patience. Just for the record, Mr. Parkhurst, would you read the motion to table, Section B on the... 
Uh, <clears throat> motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented and the application of Nextel Communications of Mid-Atlantic for a site plan review of the addition of 12 antennas to the existing 180-foot tall tower located at 351 Spurwink Ave be tabled to the regular May 16, 2000 meeting of the planning board. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion by board members? If I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, please. It is unanimous. Thank you. do is call the Jordans because we're now a little bit ahead of schedule and we will take out of order the Murray repair garage site plan scheduled for 840 the applicant would come forward and set up their plans please mr. chairman I need to recuse myself from this matter due to a business relationship my firm has with mr. Murray thank you very much <clears throat> Right ahead whenever you're ready, sir. Good evening. My name is John Mitchell, Mitchell Associates, and I represent uh, Delphi Murray and Sons. The, uh, the site is a 1.27 acre uh, site located at 12 Duty Shore Road, uh, which is located in the town center district. So, uh, the proposal. <coughs> is to replace an existing 1,247 square foot garage with a new 1,536 square foot garage. Uh, the structure, which is located right here, the existing structure is located here, uh, has been designed and, and located uh, in accordance with the town center district uh, design standards. Uh, with regards to the footprint and the siting of the buildings, of the, of the building, uh, its compatibility with the surrounding area, the scale, the height, the roof pitch, the fenestrations, uh, and the exterior materials. Uh, once the new structure is completed, the existing structure will be raised. Um, there will also be a a new eight-foot high stockade fence located in a in this location here. It's a it's a small opening between the existing fire and rescue building and the property line. And this will uh, add to the to the buffering of the site. Uh, other than that, uh, there are there will be uh, existing utilities uh, which will connect to the proposed building: underground sewer, water, electric, and telephone. Uh, will be extended to the to the new building. Uh, other than that, there are no other site improvements. Uh, we did receive zoning board of approval, zoning board of appeals approval on March 28th uh, for the expansion of the the garage. I believe it's 22 percent larger than the existing structure, um, and for a non-conforming use. Uh, with that, I'd, I'd like to uh, just briefly review uh, Maureen's letter, uh, starting with a summary of completeness items. Uh, the first item has to do with a 20-foot wide strip of land, uh, which was identified once we did the boundary survey. Um, it was identified that uh, L.P. Murray uh, did not own it. Um, it's, it's located right along the easterly boundary line. 
L.P. Murray was not aware of it, nor was the, the owner aware of uh, that they own this land. But since the time that we submitted our package and now, L.P. Murray and Sons has purchased that 20-foot uh, strip of wood. So it's, it's all um, L.P. Murray uh, property now. And I believe that uh, Maureen has passed out um, proof of right title and interest the second item, uh, which is number eight, uh, has to do with uh, a waiver that we're requesting for uh, locating physical features within 200 feet of the site and a high intensity soil survey. Um, and both of these items were uh, presented to you and, and discussed at the, at the workshop. Um, as well as the, the next item, which we're requesting is a waiver of stormwater management. Uh, as we stated, there is no increase in impervious surface. The, the new structure, um, which is proposed, is being built in an area of gravel. Um, therefore, there is no uh, increase in impervious uh, surface and would not be any need to uh, perform a stormwater analysis. The next item uh, has to do with solid waste and uh, just a clarification, the solid waste uh, is stored inside the building. There is no exterior dumpster. Uh, it's stored inside the building and then transferred to the, the uh, town's transfer facility. And the last item on the following page has to do with financial capability. And again, I think that Marine passed um, passed out a document from the bank indicating uh, L.P. Murray's financial capability to perform this project. So with that, I'd be open to any questions that you have. <coughs> Mitchell, I'd like to pause at this time and, and ask the planning board to uh, limit his discussion to completeness, at which at the completion of which we'll vote on completeness, and then we'll move on to the substantive hearing before us. Any questions or concerns from board members in regards to the application being complete? Mr. Parkhurst. <clears throat> uh, no, I'd like to make a motion. Right ahead. Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of L.P. Murray and Sons for site plan review to replace an existing 1,247 square foot garage with a new 1,536 square foot garage located at 1230 Shore Road be deemed complete. We have a motion. Do we have a second? So, second. Thank you, David. The motion and second. Is there further discussion by board members? Hearing none, I'll call for the motion to be voted on. All those in favor, please vote by raising your right hand. Thank you. One member not voting. matter is now open for discussion. Two things you may want to consider as board members as to whether or not a site walk is necessary or a public hearing to be scheduled. <clears throat> Mr. Parkhurst. Uh, I have two questions only. Uh, on my memorandum <clears throat> at the very bottom of the page, 12D, uh, the last line I think it just zipped off and it never, never land. Uh, do you know what that says? Yeah, what I, Mr. Mitchell also asked for it, and when I told him the board didn't have it either, he was a lot less concerned about it. Um, <laughs> I, I was just suggesting that if the applicant was storing uh, materials, uh, actually solid waste, on site, not on, inside a building, that you may want to get information about uh, what is going to be stored outside, because typically if there's a dumpster or something like that, you may want buffering. Uh, I've since been informed that any on-site solid waste storage would be done inside a building. <clears throat> and my other question is, um, and I, I may be missing something here, but it's my understanding once the new garage is built, the old garage is going to be torn down, but the concrete slab inside the garage is going to be left there. Correct. So won't there be an increase in impervious area on the site? No, because uh, where the, the proposed building is being built is a gravel surface right 
now, which is considered impervious when you do Gravel it meaning work. paved, you mean? And no, it's, it's a gravel surface, which when you're figuring stormwater calculations, you, you consider gravel as impervious. Okay, fine. Thank you. Nancy? I wondered what you were going to use the garage pad for, the old garage. Um, Skip, give me a little clip here. Mr. Murray, before you speak, could you just state your name so we could have it on the video? Sure. I'm Skip Murray, L.P. Murray III, basically, from L.P. Murray III. And uh, I just propose leaving the pad there to park one of the dump trucks on, or two hopefully if it fits, um, as a nice solid surface to park on. That's all. It can be ripped up and left as gravel if the board wishes, but it's just it's there. And I thought I'd make a nice parking spot along the top. I was just curious. No, <laughs> it will be it will be uh, essentially hidden because it's behind the proposed building and behind a, the town rescue building, almost hidden from view. <clears throat> the applicant. Wait, are there Go right ahead. Uh, the applicant would like to. Um, since there hasn't been really any any public, uh, we had the workshop. There was no one from the public who was there tonight, um, and then because of time, construction season, and so forth, the applicant would like to request, uh, if at all possible, for the board to act on this this evening, so that he could begin. Does the board have any objections to begin a substantive review and complete this application this evening? John? Yeah, just a question. The, uh, can you give me a better idea of what the fence is going to consist of or look like? Uh, the fence will be um, an eight foot high standard stockade fence, your standard high stockade fence. And I noticed that on the engineer's letter, he indicated that. Um, a detail be submitted, and we'd be happy to do that as a condition of approval. But it is a standard solid wood stockade fence, eight feet high. David? I just wanted to ask Maureen if there's any reason that uh, we would be in trouble if we waived the. Uh, hearing or site walk? Um, the, both the public hearing and the site walk are optional at the discretion of the board. Uh, the board has in the past uh, on occasion not held a, a public hearing. Um, often you don't have a site walk if you're familiar with the site. Uh, typically if there's any, any inkling of, at all that there are people out there who would like to speak on the project, you will hold a public hearing. Uh, <coughs> John, has it, did anyone speak at the zoning board meeting? Uh, I don't think there was no one from the yeah. public response. No. I haven't received any letters or any calls. It's, uh, okay, it's really the board's call. Thank you, Maureen. Further comments from the board? Steve? <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion. Go right ahead. Motion for the board to consider. Uh, be it for the further order that the application of L.P. Murray's and Sons for site plan review to replace an existing 1,247-square-foot garage with a new 1,536-square-foot garage located at 1230 Shore Road be approved. Second. Thank you, Nancy. There's a motion made and seconded. Is there further discussion by the board? Hearing none, those in favor? Uh, John, do you have a question? Yeah. Go right ahead. We can, we can wait. Here's a note from the town engineer regarding floor drains. Um, I guess I didn't understand the note. It says that floor drains are not allowed by code. A note confirming the situation should be added to the site plan. If they're not allowed and they're not in the, they're not in the proposal, is that correct? Correct. Right. 
I don't understand that what the comment was in terms of the need for a note for him. Um, when, when your engineer reviews these site plans, he reviews them to the detail that they could be handed to someone who's going to build the building. And that's why he asks for things like that because the person who's going to build the building never comes to planning board meetings and may not even be familiar with codes. Um, if you're concerned about that, one way to handle it would be to place a condition on this approval that all the issues raised by the town engineer and the letter dated the state be addressed. Well, we're not, we're already not addressing all of them, so I don't know if that would be appropriate, but um, a, a condition that there be no floor drains, if that's necessary, I, I guess I would certainly wish to add. Any objections, Mr. Parker? <clears throat> None. Yes, Michael, please come forward. My name is Michael McGovern. I'm the town manager of Cape Elizabeth, and the town owns all of the property on this end, this end, and this end. I just had a question for the board, since you're not having a public hearing, uh, in terms of what you plan for performance guarantees, if any. I believe we have a mortgage approval in our packet this evening. Maureen? Uh, typically with site plans, if uh, the improvements are less than $10,000, you don't require a performance guarantee. And by improvements, that's typically everything outside of the building walls. So in, in this case, I, I don't think you have anything that's worth $10,000 that are on the site. You're, you're putting up, uh, I think it's 12 feet of fencing, 16 feet of fencing. There's no plantings proposed. But the, I mean, you, you, you could ask for performance guarantee if there's some concern. Um, typically, you, you've only required it in the past on very large projects such as uh, Chancellor Gardens, uh, Congre Care Facility, and, and the Viking Nursing Home. What is the board's feeling on a performance guarantee? <clears throat> I think it's necessary given the fact we have a financial commitment from the main bank and trust. Any further comments on performance guarantee? Very well. Further comments or questions regarding the motion before us? Hearing none. Those in favor of the motion before us, it's been made and seconded. Please raise your right hand. Once again, one member not voting. We thank you very much, Mr. Thank Mitchell, Mr. Much. Murray. Thank you. Insight plan submitted by William Jordan, Jr. Uh, the applicant is not here. Uh, there may have been some confusion by us changing the date of this meeting. Uh, we have attempted to call the residents twice and have been unable to make a connection. It is my suggestion that the chair entertain a motion to table this to our next regularly scheduled meeting. Second. Thank you, David. Seconded by Steve Parkhurst. Any further discussion by board members? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Parkhurst. A second. 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 All those in favor? Thank you. We are now adjourned. <laughs>